In this lesson, we'll continue our view of reading test eight. Section one, we're still on the third passage out of five, salt stretches in the nano world. It was published in a scientific journal. And just to review again, the nano world is a world observed on a scale one billionth that of ordinary human experience. So I assume you've read the passage, you watched the first video. We are now on question 26. According to the passage, researchers have identified which mechanism as potentially responsible for the initial attraction between the microscope tip and the salt. So we're just looking what was the cause, right? Potentially what, what could be responsible for this attraction between the microscope tip and salt. And this is not a two-part question, but let's see, right at line 39, you see this, they didn't even paraphrase this. They used initial attraction between the tip right, the tip is, right, the microscope tip, and salt, and here's the reason, due to electrostatic forces, perhaps good old van der Waal interaction. So we're looking for electrostatic forces or good old van der Waal interactions. It's just as simple as finding the evidence. And we don't have electrostatic, but we do have van der Waal interactions, and so the answer is D. 27 is a word in context, what does lead mean in line 42? So let's try to predict it, line 42, lead. And this is, here's 40, we just read perhaps good old van der Waal interactions, the researchers speculate. Several mechanisms might lead to elasticity, including the excessive surface tension found in the nano world. Lead to here, it really means, I think this is sort of like, again, they're sort of speculating as to what it they discussed the cause, but what it also like might happen after that. And so if we look at the choices, I think you'll be able to predict this one. I almost wanted to say the answer, and it is the answer. <laughs> Result in, right? Because they already predicted the cause, and now they're saying it might lead to, it definitely, this effect would happen, it results in. So the answer is B for 27, and then 28, I'm gonna skim up, yes it is. So even though these are kind of split up, this is a two part question. And so we're looking, 28 is based on the passage, which choice best describes the relationship between the salt behavior in the nano world and the macro world. Remember, most of the passage discussed the nano world and I think the macro world was at the end. And if you look at the ranges for the answers, it's between 12 and 53. So we're looking for evidence, the relationship between salt behavior in the nano world and the macro world. 12 through 23. and I don't even recall the macro world being discussed at all. Remember, they're never gonna paraphrase that. It has to state, so this was all nano world, this is nano world, and then discuss the, how it was discovered and what they predicted might have been the cause. We don't even see the world, the word macro world, right? I think the first time it was introduced is in line 50. This bizarre behavior is actually mirrored in the macro world. So they're talking about the bar, bar <laughs> the bizarre behavior of salt in the nano world, how it stretches out. But now they're saying it's similar. It's mirrored in the macro world. Huge underground deposits of salt can bend like plastic, but water is believed to play a role. And so even though there's a different cause than in the nano world, it has the same effect. It both in the macro and the nano, salt stretches out. And so we know that it's going to be around here for the range. And again, they kind of made this easy, I think, because if you look at the answers for the range for 29, the only one that possibly works is D, right? The other ones, we didn't even see the word macro world. And so what's the evidence? Or what's the answer for 28? The relationship between nano world and the macro world? In both the nano world and the macro world, salt can be flexible, right? It's mirrored in the macro world. So they have it has the same effect in both worlds, and so the answer is A. And let's see, let's, we've got two more questions that are based on a graph. So it's 30 and 31. According to the information in the graph, when microscope tip is moving away from the salt surface and is 50 nanometers from the surface, what is the approximate force on the microscope tip in micronewtons? So we're looking moving away and 15 nanometers from the surface. And so let's take a look at the graph moving away. All right, so moving away is it's definitely this bottom graph and 15 nanometers. And we want to find out the micronewtons. And so we just have to sort of estimate like what value is this right here? So this is 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.
we know in the middle would be about 0.75 because this is 1. So let's see if we have 0.75 as an answer. And we do exactly that. And the answer is C. And the last question, based on the passage and the graph, so this is both, which label on the graph indicates the point at which the salt nanowire breaks? So the salt nanowire breaks. And so think about it. Which graph are we going to look at if it breaks? Is, it, is the tip moving toward the salt? Is that when salt would break? Or is it when the tip's moving away? You should recognize when it's moving away. It's pulling away. It really is stretching it out. And so also we're, we have to consider the passage too. And let's see. If we look around... Let's see in the passage two. The around line 46, the surface tension is so strong that as the microscope pulls away from the salt, the salt stretches, the inside has no choice but to rearrange the atom rather than break. And so obviously it stretches initially, but at some point, if the microscope is getting pulled farther and farther away, the salt will eventually Break. And the question here is asking at which point on the graph indicates where the salt nanowire breaks. And we've got these different letters. And so if you look at the graph, all right, so we see, let's say that the, the salt is, it's, it's only five nanometers away. And, we, and so this is the force that there's still force between, right, from the tip, right? And then here, there's still force. And then here's their force. But you see that the salt is getting farther and farther away, or the tip is moving away. And so, but then we see around here, the force is zero. And so this is kind of a tricky question. I think it's a little bit intuitive. But at what point would there be zero force? And then it's just a flat line as the, as the tip gets farther and farther away. That should, that's the breaking point, right? There's still always force between the tip and the salt. But at some point, there's no force, that's when it breaks. And so this, I think, was a kind of a tricky question. The answer is T, and let's see what letter T is. Letter T is D.